brought up by a good family. They were American. I was adopted at the age of six. And since then, they're all that's really mattered to me in life. They're an army family. Travelling came with a job. It's because of that we lost our identities. There was nothing to anchor us to the real world. Nothing to tie us into an identity. When times were good, they were really good. Even with all the travelling, we still had fun. I remember one day in particular. It was what felt like the first day of summer. The warmest day for a while. We were outside playing. No one had a care in the world. We played long into the afternoon. It wasn't until the clouds drew in like a Spanish armada that we were sucked back from this dreamscape, back to the harsh reality that we'd be moving again the next day. This would be our last day in England for a while. We returned to America for the next few years. The stress of being constantly on the move gradually faded as the years went by. These were the best times. We played and lived life like never before. There were birthday parties, Christmases, a few Halloween parties and family holidays. We were always getting into trouble, far from what you would consider a normal family. Borrowing cars, fishing violations and noise violations. Things we preferred to keep out of the family album. There was one more move before he retired. Back to England. It was hard. Despite all the good memories, we were happy in America. I'd grown up there. My last memory of America was of the town Christmas fair. It seemed as though the whole world had come out to watch. That was the day when things started to turn. That clown, it's haunted me for years. I know it's a cliche, but I was terrified of that clown. I look back on it as an omen of things to come. Things started to turn. Mass unrest. It wasn't until the dance later that night that things started to settle. cold and damp December morning when we arrived in Thurrock. England was a different place to how I'd remembered. The country was deep in political unrest. Strikes, riots everywhere. It wasn't until the next spring that the England I knew and loved once again revealed its treasures to me. It was a Tuesday morning, the day of the carnival. Dogs with better manners than us. Beauty queens. Marching bands and the grand finale the parade. The carnival was a true English affair, a contrast to the rowdy scenes of the Christmas fair back in America. At least there were no clowns here. The dance competition was held later that day. Thank <laughs> you.
Estás en medio de las movidas de Fabián en el gato 92.7. This was England at its best. The place I'd called home for so many years before being torn away and teased with. How long would it last this time? A few years passed. We were growing unhappier by the day. The final move is what ripped us apart. This country wasn't as welcoming this time around. Things were getting worse. Arguments were opening deep fissures in the fabric of our family. One by one, the only people I had known and loved for the past 13 years were disappearing into the night. Eventually it was just me, alone in a country I'd once loved and had now grown to despise. What would I do next? Vibrates or car It's absolute. And a big, many big magnifying thing. But she said, I can't do it. But she said, uh... Palmas. It ended in Mexico. I remember the day vividly. The wind was howling through the canyon like a wolf at the moon. The arid landscape of the plateau seemed more like the dark side of the moon than a Mexican gorge. It was cold, so, so cold. Wind blowing. There were only a few hours of sunlight. I lived for it, begged for it. I spent seven days and seven nights waiting and, <coughs> and watching nothing except hyenas and the odd kangaroo rat for company. On the morning of the eighth day, when the weak, limp rays of the seemingly incapacitated sun began to creep through the canyon like the tide gradually splashing on the shore, I received orders to move on the target. The stadium was gradually filling. It was more of a trickle than stampede. Gradually, one by one, they were taking their seats. Where was he? I had less than an hour. The crowd was ready for the spectacle. Little did they know what was about to happen next. They were all so innocent, playing, cheering, getting ready for the fight. The mark was Jose Luis Contador, wanted in the USA, UK and Russia. I think Mossad wanted a word as well. The only time he left his compound was to come and watch the fight. He had to be here. I knew this wasn't going to be easy. I thought of family, but it wasn't him. The fight was just about to begin. There were so many people, it was difficult to recognise anyone. The fight was ending, time was running out. Just as I thought my chance was over, there he was. clearest evidence of just how bad the violence has become in Mexico. Cases of spent bullet shells have been recovered from the site of a shootout between Mexican troops and a convoy of gunmen. The Wednesday firefight left 15 assailants and one soldier dead. It took place at a remote part of the country not too far from Acapulco and just hours before President Barack Obama arrived in Mexico to show his support for the fight against drug cartels. Officials say the soldiers were patrolling a drug trafficking hotbed when they came under fire. The ferocity of the fight is evident in 
in the bullet holes in this overturned vehicle. Troops later seized a number of weapons from the attackers. More than 10,000 people have been killed in drug violence since 2006. The country's president has sent more than 45,000 troops to confront the traffickers.